and welcome back to a progressive revolution. I am your host, as usual, Elliot Bernard, and today we've got a four-story show. It's actually been a fairly depressing week, really. Um, we've got the UN saying that racism is on the rise in Australia. Uh, we've got we've got resignations from the Senate. We've got all sorts of awful, crazy things going on in the country this week, so let's get right to it. Sam Destiari has resigned. That's pretty much the story. Um, so Sam Destiari is, of course, the senator that um, has had many stories come out uh, about his connection to uh, a particular Chinese donor. And just mounting pressure obviously got to him, and it obviously was just decided that was the best decision for him and for the direction of the Labour Party mainly for the Labour Party, but anyway. Now, I do want to talk about the, the guy he is actually, the guy he is actually associated with, um, which is, now I'm, I'm going to botch this name, Hyung Zhangmo? Now, believe it or not, he's actually not just a donor to Labour, as that's kind of been the narrative that's been spun in all this. Um, he's actually a donor to both parties. And in fact, the first donation that he ever made was actually to the Liberal Party, and it was 50k, and that was to the Victorian branch of uh, Liberals, and then, this is the most amazing, most preposterous thing I've ever heard as well. So, in 2015, he made a $55,000 donation to Labour so that he could sit at a boardroom lunch with Bill Shorten. Golly gee, I wonder why he might have done that. Preposterous. Absolutely preposterous. If we fast forward to today, there are, um, there's actually a connection to, um, with this Zhuangmo fella. And um, and uh, Malcolm Turnbull's wife, believe it or not. Like, I'm not a huge fan of... Um, I don't care about people's wives or families, but um, considering that this is... Uh, it, this is um, very relevant. So I'm going to read this from an ABC article. Um, so, uh, basically, Lucy Turnbull, who's obviously the wife of the Prime Minister, so she's head of the Greater Sydney Commission, which will have to... Um, approve a plan for a development project. So to read from the, so to read from the, um, uh, the ABC article. So, uh, Mr. Sh Mr. Schwung is behind the 276 million plan, million dollar plan to demolish and develop the Eastwood shopping center in Sydney's Northwest suburbs. And Luce Turnbull was the head of the commissioner has to approve that project. Golly gee, I wonder why he might be giving donations to both, um, to, to the Liberal Party in particular. Again, the controversy at the moment is with him and Destiari, um, particularly the very dodgy accusation that, um, the accusate, well, not the accusation is dodgy, the, what Sam Destiari allegedly did is really dodgy, where he apparently may or may not have um, tipped off this donor that um, his phone was being tapped. So that if he wanted a conversation in private, he had to ditch his phone, which if that's true is amazing. For just all the all very bad reasons, but yeah. Anyway, but the point. Anyway, but the whole point of this race, that excuse like Sam Destiari, um, it's very unfortunate because because Sam Destiari wanted to get money out of politics, which is something that we should all want to do. Um, but at the end of the day, he had all these really bad connections, and he should go down for it. Um, but the reality is, is that this Zhuang Mo like isn't just gonna go away now. He's he's one of them. He's potentially one of the most influential donors in the entire country. Um. So this whole idea that um, the Liberal Party is somehow immune um, to this guy's influence is bullshit. Um, they have a history with both parties. So just keep this in mind when, you know, we're throwing shade at Labour, which, again, I'm not a Labour supporter, so I don't give a shit. Just throw as much shade at, the, uh, um, at them um, as you want, but let's all be fair and equal in this. Um, objectively fair and equal, anyway, rather than being neutral for the sake of it. Um, but let's just keep it real. Um that's why you got to get the money out. That's why you got to get the money out of politics, um, so that these donors can't buy our politicians. Because if you buy the politicians, they represent the donors rather than the people. So we have a problem. That's why you got to get the money out of politics. Um, so yeah, the 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 um, the DSTR, the DSTR resigning thing isn't really that interesting. Um, I'd actually said last week that he probably shouldn't have resigned. I just think he shouldn't have stood for re-election. But considering that the election is most likely going to be um, mid next year probably April, May, something, somewhere around that time. You know, it's not a big deal, him resigning, you know, four months of prior, prior to an election. So, um, 
the, the Death Sierra Rizani thing's a, a nothing story. Um, it's just the I guess the only sad thing about Destiari leaving is that um, on on certain issues Destiari was a strong progressive, so we've lost um, a progressive voice in the parliament. But as I said, if this dude's bought off by a Chinese donor, I don't care what kind of donor it is. <laughs> but he's, he's bought off by a donor, um, and he's uh, you know, and there's there's very clear evidence of him having um, ties to this. And yeah, get rid of him, <laughs> whatever. Um, you know, I'd prefer it to be someone who's less corrupted, but that's less likely going to happen. Um, but yeah, anyway, but anyway, but the more interesting part is that this, uh, this Chinese donor is very clearly, um, influential and it's one of those things where now that you know about it, um, the more you can be aware and also the more that you're more angry you can be, um, and also having an understanding of how much influence this guy has. I swear to God, if Lucy Turnbull, um, approves this fucking deal, which I don't know anything about the deal. I don't know if it's a good deal or a bad deal. That's not my area. Um local politics is not my thing by any stretch of the imagination um but yeah if if she approves it i i'm not saying anything i'm just saying that questions might want to be asked but that's all i'm saying so last week i talked about um the end what i what i refer to as the anti-satire bill the idea that um the government wants to be able to um legislate uh, genuine satire which basically means they get to decide um what kind of satire is genuine or not, which is total bullshit and is a total violation of free speech. Um, however, that is not the only super dodgy thing that the government um, have tried to do under the shroud of darkness of all the bullshit that's been going on. Um, in fact, in what I would call the... <laughs> this is so awful. The fact that so uh, marriage equality has just been just been put through and then Turnbull put, put through his... Uh, he, he introduces a bill... To the parliament, which would throw journalists in jail for 20 years. No, I am not joking. I'm being daily serious. So, this bill has the has the pretense of being for national security. In fact, the legislation is the bill is literally called National Leg National Security Legislation Amendment Espionage and Foreign in um, Interference Bill 2017. So, this bill does genuinely have some things which would combat um, foreign influence. Now, this does not include getting rid of foreign donations, which would solve your problems, a lot of the problems that we're currently facing now, but at least they're showing some sort of effort to want to try and do something, even if it is just incremental change rather than the um, the revolutionary change that we need right now on this issue. Um, however, they couldn't help themselves by throwing in something totally, totally fucking dodgy. Um, so... We want, so people watching this will presumably know what a whistleblower is. So essentially, these are the guys who um, leak government secrets um, to the public, and ninety percent of the time, these are things that you know you want to know. So you know, crimes the governments are committing, or the fact that you know uh, you have uh, countrywide surveillance, shit like that, right? This is and whistleblowers are important. Um, now, Australia does not exactly have the greatest reputation with dealing with whistleblowers. I mean, currently in the law. And whistleblowers can be put in jail for seven years. However, this was not good enough for the for the Turnbull government, so they want that to be twenty years. But they've also extended that 20, uh, 20 year max jail term to the journalists that publish um, the leaked documents. So if so, if you're a journalist who wants to do your job, you know you get some information that you didn't personally steal. Well, you know, however you want to frame that, whatever. Let's that's the most generous way you could frame it for the guys that hate whistleblowers. Um. They should be able to publish it because logic. Um, that's literally their job. Is that if a journalist um, comes into contact with information which is in the public interest, it's literally their job to publish that information. There's no point in having journalists. So if you if they can't do that, so I this yeah this you know so it, having this law effectively kills the most the most amazing part of journalism. And the fact they want to be able to throw journalists in jail for 20 years is insane. And it's obviously, a, again, it's another giant violation to free speech. You know, it amazes me we had a free, we had a free months debate about how somehow marriage equality would kill free speech in the country. And then we have legitimate threats to free speech, like wanting to throw journalists in jail for 20 years. And I, I don't hear, I hear silence. I don't, I'm not hearing anything. Now, this is done under the pretense of bullshit of Chinese and Russian interference, which again, there's part, you know, the bill is partially to deal with China, you know, Chinese foreign, don't, you know, foreign influence, which again is bullshit because you could just 
get rid of foreign donations and then you would solve a lot of the problems, but, you know, leaving that aside. So, wanting to throw whistleblowers in jail on the pretense of, well, somehow this would curb foreign influence is bullshit. Um, it very much feels like this has just been shoehorned in. Um, so yeah, this is kind of bullshit. Um, so this is dodgy bill number two that's been done during this whole saga. And as well, it was introduced in the very last parliament. So everyone's going to forget about this until parliament resumes. And then we're going to have debates on this. And I put money on it that this will get through. It's terrible. And this will be a terrible, terrible thing to do to the practice of journalism. And as much as I shit on the media a lot on this show, um, the media don't go out of the way to actively lie. <laughs> The mainstream media don't go out of the way to actively lie. They might have a bias that they're not aware of, which, as I've explained on the show before, is an establishment bias. But at least, you know, but at least when sort of like facts come towards them or a big investigation, they're more than willing um, to put that information out there. So this idea of wanting to cripple journalists, you know, and if they refuse to be crippled, then they'll get thrown in jail is preposterous. Um, I did read some great comments from, from journalists who were aware of this, and they're like, well, guess I'm going to jail then. So it is really cool that there are um, some journalists around the country that are like, fine, it's my job. <laughs> and I, what do you want me to do, not do my job? Which, to answer that question, yes, the government literally don't want you to do your job. And as well, I was reading about this um, a couple of days ago. Apparently, Australia, apparently the, apparently the Australian government has, a, has a, uh, in comparison to the rest of the world, has this really bad habit of, like, over-classifying things. Um, and apparently, the immig- I think it's the immigration department is particularly bad. So, in like other immigration departments, um, uh, like most of their documents aren't sealed. Whereas in Australia, the immigration department apparently just seals nearly everything. Um, and this and this twenty and this twenty uh, year max thing does apply to any type of classification that isn't open. So it's ultra bullshit. So even if it's oh, and the best bit is as well. Um, in the legislation, it says that. Um, you have to be able to prove that this is within the best interest of the Australian people. I mean, come on, this is bullshit. Uh, it should be the other way around. The government should have to prove that this isn't in the in the national interest, or at least both should have to prove it. But this is total. This is totally preposterous. Um. So yeah, so the government is trying to kill journalism. Ain't that just fucking great? In 2012, then Prime Minister Julia Gillard um, announced that there would be an Australian Royal Commission, and that Royal Commission is on the institutional response into child sexual abuse. And they examined all religious organisations, state care providers, non-for-profit bodies, and other child service agencies, including how these organisations responded to abuse allegations. And five years later, the the reports come back in full, signed off by the Governor-General, I believe, Friday, and the findings are devastating. I mean, I was saying at the beginning of the show, this this is a devastating story. It was just fucking awful. I mean, like the the thing, the one the one stat that amazed me the most um, was that the average duration of child sexual abuse experience in institutions was two two point two years. <laughs> so this means that like abuse wasn't just ha- well, abuse wasn't just a one time thing. Victims would obviously be chosen, and they would just be consistently sexually abused that's 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 just i can't wrap my head around that that's insane to me um the majority of survivors 64.3 percent were male now the um the catholic church got absolutely fucking skewered in this um so out of religious institutions i don't know if the stat in front of me but so out of every institution regardless of what type of organization it was they had a roughly a 35% of all sexual abuse cases. And then when you looked at all religious organizations, I believe it was 62%. I don't have that number in front of me. Um, so the Catholic church got absolutely fucking skewered in this. And we will go through some of the reactions to this Royal Commission in a second. Um, I do want to say though, um, as just as an aside, that um, if Julia Gillard goes down as like, when we look back on her legacy... Um, I think this, I think this could potentially save her legacy in many ways. I mean, this was her thing. Um, 
past prime ministers had all said that a, uh, a royal commission was not needed on this. Well, I think the results clearly state that they were all wrong and that Julia Gillard was right. Um, so when we look back at Julia Gillard's legacy, this this should be high up there. She should definitely be up there. And again, it's not about her. This is about obviously the victims and obviously dealing with um, the recommendations that were given. But you got to give Julia Gillard props because she was right. She went against some of her own predecessors. So, um, anyway, but, but uh, the uh, the states all around the country now have to now have six months to respond with something, <laughs> uh, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, because some states have done, uh, have already reacted, and some states are somehow wanting to debate this. <laughs> which is preposterous. But yeah, if you want to read more, um, definitely go check out The Guardian because they did a really good rundown of all of this, um, including the history of it. And I believe they're... Re- I haven't listened to it and I don't know how good it is, uh, but they've, uh, they're doing a four-part podcast on the road to... on the beginning to end for this Royal Commission. So if that's any good, I will let you know. But yeah. Um, yeah. So if you want if you want to uh, read more information, because I could do an entire show on this. Um, yeah, definitely go check out The Guardian for more information. And if this if this continues to be a rolling story, um, I will um, I'll do more on this uh, for the Christmas edition of APR, which will be next week. With the Royal Commission publishing their twenty one volume report after five years of work um, into institutional responses into child sexual abuse, there are obviously a number of they obviously uh, introduced a vast number of recommendations. Now, um, the Catholic Church got absolutely skewed in this, and there came one very interesting recommendation. So there were two recommendations. One is less important than the other. So one was the enter celibacy. Great. Um, And the other one was that when it comes to... So during confession, um, at the moment... At the moment, as it stands, um, when taking confession, the person listening to the confession um, can't do anything about it outside, or otherwise they will be excommunicated from the Catholic Church. However, there's been a recommendation, however, the recommendation was that this secrecy should end, so that if, if a confession is made about sexual abuse, then this should be taken to police. However, the archbishops of uh, New South Wales, and I believe Victoria, they disagree with this. They're like, we'd rather, we, we don't want to be excommunicated. Their response was essentially, being excommunicated is worse than having to um, keep a sex, sexual abuse story secret. And you wonder why the Catholic Church is in so much shit over this. I mean, this confirms stereotypes about the Catholic... I mean, this report very much confirmed um, a lot of stereotypes about the Catholic Church when it comes to child abuse. And their response is, well, we could do something about it, but fuck that. We, we, we'd rather not be excommunicated. That, to me, doesn't seem like a big um, priority when you're dealing with child sexual assault, which averages 2.2 years. Jesus fucking Christ. Um, however, unlike them, um, New South Wales has responded well. I don't know the exact details on this, but uh, basically within like a couple of hours, they'd already set up a commission. <laughs> so, New South Wales, awesome. Now, my home state of South Australia on the other hand, wants to debate this. <laughs> so, South Australia has already had to deal with um, one child abuse report this year, and I will get John Rowell's quote, who is the Attorney General, and he has about eight other portfolios, one of which is the Child Protection Minister. That's one of his seven portfolios. Oh, this was John Rowell's quote. I fucking hate this quote so much. The South Australian government would need time to consider the recommendations delivered yesterday and their relevance to SA. <laughs> Dude, it's a national report. <laughs> it's relevant to you. For fuck's sakes. And then he went on to say that um, the SA government has already implemented significant reform to improve child protection in South Australia, including a suite of new child safety legislation. The Commission's final reports provide an opportunity to assess whether there are opportunities to further improve our responses. Which, in other words, means we're not going to do anything for a while, we're going to debate this, and we'll probably do, and we'll do as minimum as humanly possible. That's how I read that. I could be totally wrong, but that to me is an unacceptable response. What do you mean the relevance of your state? Are you shitting me? 
especially when you're dealing with SA, who's had at least two major controversies to do with child abuse. Not in, not institutional, mind you, but SA have had serious problems with having to deal with child abuse in their state. So this idea that this preposterous idea that somehow it, this might not be relevant to you. Are you kidding me? Out of all the states, this could be the most relevant to you. Are you shitting me? It's preposterous. But also from someone who's from South Australia, doesn't surprise me at all. <laughs> it's just, oh, the incompetence is just um, unreal. This is not a debate. You have New South Wales who have immediately set something up within, I believe it was, it was you know, the way I read it, it sounded as if they didn't know a few hours, but the reality is it might have been within 24, 48 hours. But New South Wales does something straight away. And they're like, you know, we're going to keep on rolling through these recommendation stuff. Now, the federal government has said that um, if need be, if states don't have a, um, a good enough response, then they will forcibly make them, which I thought, which I thought on this issue is great. If they want to force states to do the right thing, great. On this issue, if they want to force states... No problem there. I will have, I will defend them to the cows come home, as the saying goes. Um, now, look, there are actually some open questions to do uh, that haven't 100% been confirmed, including allowing people that have served up uh, five years or more in prison to be able to access compensation money. That's going to be a really interesting debate because basically there are the two sides of we don't want to let um, convicted criminals access the money but at the same time if they hadn't have been if uh, if they'd never been abused as a child would they have ended up in prison and that's not my fault that's just from what i've those are the two sort of those are the sort of sides that um that the government has to tackle with and so far they've actually seemed at first they seemed open to the idea and the more you the more it's kind of gone on the last few days they've kind of been less open but you know at least we're having a conversation which is good but basically, um, they're taking on, I think, most of the... From what I've read, uh, the, lib uh, the Liberal government are taking a lot of the recommendations on board, which is good. So, um, as I said, uh, as more of this comes out, I will probably do more of this on the Christmas edition. God, the Christmas edition of this show is going to be depressing as fuck. Um, anyway, so those are just some of the responses for this. Uh, and as you can see, some of them are great, and some of them are just, what the fuck's wrong with you? The United Nations released a report this week that says racism is on the rise in Australia. Now they doubt. Now they uh, recommended a, a few things. I'm going to um, deal with three of them because I and so this this information comes from the Age, which will become particularly relevant at the end of this story because I do ha I do have um, issues with the Age a little bit. So um, one of the UN's recommendation was to ditch the anti-terrorism and national security clauses of the Multicultural Australia Statement, which warns that um, this could potentially encourage um, racial profiling. And one of and a liberal senator came out and said this criticism is bizarre. Now, this is purely my opinion, um, and I haven't actually heard anyone else say this, but I went and read the Multicultural Australia Statement, uh, and in particular that clause, and it's the most, speaking of bizarre, it is the most bizarre thing to just casually add in there. Like, you're dealing with, like, values and, you know, all the other stuff that's in there. It just seems really weird within this 16-page statement to bring up, like, security in, in a multicultural statement. It just seems bizarre. It's a bizarre, it is a bizarre thing that's really shoehorned in. It almost, it makes you think of one or two things, like, they've, like, done this report and someone's gone, oh, let's add this in and people have thought this was a good idea, or this entire purpose was to add, was, was, or the entire report was just a, was just a charade in order to, um, a charade, so that they could put this clause in in the first place and they're like, what can we package it with so it doesn't sound like we're being racist? Decisions! Make it multicultural. I'm not saying they're being racist, but I'm just saying that you could think that. I could see I could see why you might um, perceive it that way. Anyway, it's bizarre. But anyway, it's free to read, so uh, you should. Everyone should go and look look uh, look at that. Um, it's a, it's an interesting little document. A part of me doesn't really know why they commissioned it. Well, I do. It's uh, I, I would imagine anyway, based on its timing, that it would have to do with um, Turnbull's um, citizenship changes which were going on at the time, so I would imagine they were to coincide with that. But most of the recommendations were just common sense. Like, for example, in there, like, you know, Australia needs to combat xenophobia, 
in political discourse. It was just simply that politicians need to be more proactive in saying, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> like, they're not at any point saying, you can't say certain things. All that they said was, was that, you know, if someone says something xenophobic, call them out for being xenophobic and explain why they're wrong. Whereas we don't, we have a little bit, but not really. Um, and there are other recommendation which um, The Age was unhappy about because they made it very clear in the article. All that the UN suggested with the media was that they should have, um, not a new law, but just internally they should create, um, they should create internal policy, which basically says that xenophobia is unacceptable. <laughs> That's it. And maybe don't publish racist articles. That's, that's literally all they said. Well, that was my interpretation of what they said anyway. And the age is just... <laughs> and the age has just lost their shit by saying, the UN suggests we should censor the media. And I'm like, no, no, they didn't say that. That's not remotely true. Which was funny because... Currently you have a government that wants to... Redu that, that wants to censor you. And yet you're attacking an organisation that just wants to not have racism. <laughs> That's all they want. And you'll go and attack them, but not the government that currently wants to censor you. Logic. Jesus fucking Christ. So I was pissed off. I was pissed off at that bit of the article. But, the, you know, the article was fine. Um, so, yeah, so this will be reported because everyone will lose their shit that the UN wants to censor the media and that uh, they want to censor the political discourse. No, they just want to, A, to not, you know, to preferably not release racist articles fair enough they're not saying let's make a law banning racist articles they're just saying hey maybe don't po maybe don't maybe have it as an internal policy to not publish things that are racist and this is mainstream news anyway i mean if you want to read racist articles i'm sure there are I'm sure there are tons of news sites you know where white supremacists go and um you know, spew their racist garbage, right? And I'm not even saying that, um, you know, the racist stuff would be coming from white supremacists. I'm just using that as an extreme example. Um, and all they're saying for and all they're saying for the political discourses is, is call people out for being xenophobic. <laughs> That's all they're saying. And somehow this is they want to censor political discourse in media. So what the fuck are you on about? They literally didn't say that. So whilst so so age. What the actual fuck is wrong with you? Jesus Christ. So the age is wrong. <laughs> anyway, but apart from... Anyway. But they did a good job of covering the story. Except for that bit of bullshit. But So their framing was horrible. But at least... At least they had the articles. So that was nice. Okay, well this is the end of the show. Next week will be the APR Christmas special. I'm not sure what's special about it other than it's on Christmas. But maybe we'll work something out. Anyway, thank you so much for watching again. I have been Elliot Bernard, this has been the Progressive Revolution, and I will see you next.